Hi, my name is Jeb Lee. I would like to talk about arthroscopic dorsal intercarpal ligament augmentation for dynamic scaphalunate and lunar tracheal ligament tear. The scaphalunate ligament instability is not a single ligament problem, but involves multiple ligaments that result in progressive arthritis of the wrist. Many surgical options have been introduced with mixed clinical results. Even with the newly developed anatomic procedures, sometimes fail with no obvious reasons. I think there have been several concerns on current scaphalunar reconstruction procedures as described below. Naturally, there are more than 30 degrees of rotation motion happening between scaphoid and lunate. And that is why there is a reason why scaphalunar repair is easy to fail and the scaphalunar fusion is difficult to achieve. Most of the procedures are focused on re uh, repairing scaphalunar ligament with proximal scaphoid hole which fails to extend the scaphoid. As you can see in this picture, dorsal capsule with dorsal intercarpal ligament is widely resetted and released, which might aggravate the scaphalunar instability. I think the dorsal portion of the scaphalunar uh, intosis ligament is only a pivot point or gearbox of a car for scaphoid rotation. But we need an engine to actively extend the scaphoid, which in my opinion, it is the triquetrum. Decreased vascularity of the lunate is also a matter of concern during the scaphalunate reconstruction, and it may result in fracture or avascular necrosis with large drill holes. I also found that the dynamic scaphalunate and neurotriquetral instability is frequently uh, coexisted in the same patient, which can be explained by Mayfield progressive peritoneal instability theory. Scaphalunate and tricatrium avulsion fractures are sometimes identified in the uh, sprained wrist patient like this pa uh, radiographs. And this indicates total intercarpal ligament has an important role on developing scaphalunate and lunar tricatrial instability. Here I would like to introduce my arthroscopic procedure to stabilize scaphalunate and runotriquetra joint by tightening up dorsal intercarpal ligament. As Dr. Mathelin and Hale talked about the dorsal capsular ligamentous repair technique, DCSS plays an important role to uh, connect dorsal intercarpal ligament and the scaphalunate intosis ligament. However, I found there are several patients who had a lax dorsal intercarpal ligament but relatively intact DCSS as you can see in this video. So I decided to focus on tightening the dorsal intercarpal ligament, specifically the scapotropic uh, tracheotra ligament as described by Haggard. Open procedures for the dorsal intercarpal ligament reconstructions are well described in the literature. But I thought isoscopic uh, itself has many advantages to reduce carpal deformities. According to Mark Garcia Elias, scaphoid is extended and supinated, and lunate can be radially translocated by axial traction. Once the carpal bones reduced with axial traction, I decided to put on non-absorbable suture alongside the dorsal intercarpal ligament via STT and MCU portal and fix the suture to the scaphoid and triquetral with two anchors. Here are the ingredients of this procedure. I chose 1.3 mm suture tape and it is passed with micro suture lasso from Anthrax. To make a drill hole, I use blunt tip needle as a guide and 2.0 mm cannulated drills. For suture fixation, I use two push lock anchors, with, uh, which is 2.5 mm in size. Here are the examples of passing su uh, suture tape with micro suture lasso. Viewing from the MCU portal, routine cyanobectomy and evaluation of the dorsal intercarpal ligament and scaphalunate interval was done via STT portal. Firstly, a drill hole was made with a blunt tip needle 
and KYO was introduced through the needle. A cannulated drill bill was used to enlarge the tunnel. After changing the viewing portal, dorsal intercarpal ligament status and lunar triquetral interval was also evaluated. A triquetral drill hole was also made with the same manner. Uh, then, suture lasso was introduced from the MCU portal and tried to grab a portion of those intercarpal ligament. And finally, suture anchors were placed in the scaphoid and triquetral to tighten up the suture tape. This is a clinical example of this procedure. At the final follow-up, you can see the scaphoid is a little bit extended and supinated so that the distal part of the scaphoid does not contact with radial styloid. In the clenched fist view, the scaphoid gap seems decreased in the final follow-up radiographs. Dosal protrusion of the proximal pore of the scaphoid is also decreased. Combined TFCC phobia repair and online shortening was performed with this procedure. The operation time was re less than two hours. These are clinical results of these procedures. I think this procedure can be indicated for EWAS stages 3B and C, uh, scaphoid instability. Capsular shrinkage should be just fine for the earlier stages and volar reconstructive procedure might be needed for stage 4 instability. Although not always indicated, this procedure may be effective for a snag wrist patient who refused to receive any type of partial wrist diffusion. In summary, I would like to introduce isoscopic dosa intercarpal ligament augmentation procedure for dynamic scaphalonate instability. I've been doing this for more than 40%, uh, 40 patients since early 2020, and the short-term results are promising. And I hope I'm not making a bad situation even worse with this procedure. Thanks for your attention.